indie zombie. Games. Hey everybody, welcome back to Indie Zombie Let's Play. This is more of Zombie Adventure Part 5, possibly the finale. We'll see how well this goes. Okay, so we... Uh, I've just been captured by Cortez and his men, and uh, now we're going to see what happens. Uh, let's stay silent. We're already near death. You stay silent. Cortez doesn't seem to notice and keeps talking. You were acting strange on the bus. I remember you didn't seem to take too kindly to, to me shoving that one slave girl who was acting up. Did that somehow offend you? Okay, so we're not offended, or, 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 I mean, we're, okay, so we're not related, but maybe we were a former bodyguard, or maybe we were just somebody who was just looking for transportation, or who knows. Uh, ask what he means. Cortez raises his voice in anger. You were one of my best bodyguards. Yep, called it. Uh, I, I was a bodyguard. And I treated you, and, and I treated you as such. Food, water... Women, men, whatever you wanted, I, I gave you. Okay, I'll give this game credit for being open about, uh, you know, your, whether you're gay, straight, bisexual, and, and, you know, I'll give it that, you know, for being like, hey, who cares? Whatever you wanted, I, I gave you, the, and and this is how you repay me? So, so I left you for dead, but that's because, but that's because you're a dumbass driver to... But that's because your dumbass driver t told me you were. You, you you don't hear the second half of his answer because your mind is blown by Cartes stating that you were one of his bodyguards. He keeps talking, but you are too overwhelmed by this information to understand his words. You're just as responsible as he, as he is for the slaves in those cages at Lancaster Market. Cortez snaps his fingers in front of your face to, to pull you back into the conversation. Even now, you're, you're acting weird, he says with contempt. Will you at least tell me why you suddenly care about these slaves? Tell the truth. You tell Cortez that you woke up in the bus having no memory of, of working for him. Instead, you followed the trail of information about the convoy to Lancaster where you discovered who Cortez was and what he was doing. Amazing, says Cortez as he ponders your answer. You, you won't you, you won't tell me the truth so, so you make up that bullshit Cort Cortez storms out of the room muttering about how good help is so hard to find these days a large man with scars on his face and tattoos all over his exposed upper body enters the room with a plastic bag he stands behind you and prepares to suffocate you with it we can let him kill us or we can fight back we'll fight back Violently and with no warning, you slam your head back and up into the man's crotch. Even though the blow was considerable, he still manages to cover your head with the bag and pull it tight. You fight the instinct to gasp for breath and instead wrap your legs around the chair, lift it, and bring it down hard on the man's foot. You instinctively... He instinctively lowers his head as a result of you crushing his foot which allows you the opportunity to, to throw your shoulder up into his jaw apparently it's true that the bigger they are the harder they fall because this guy w went down faster than some of the zombies you fought his jaw definitely broke from you jamming it into your shoulder but more importantly he, he was knocked unconscious when he fell against the concrete floor you throw your head back and forth while pitching while pitching it down at the floor until the bag is dislodged. Finally able to breathe, you, you get up and out of the chair and look for some way to cut the zip ties binding your wrists together. Now that you're on your feet, you can see the wall behind where you were sitting as a large mirror hang, hanging against it. You kick the center of it and, and glass shards scatter outward from, from the assault. You back up against the shard, still attached to the mirror, and begin rubbing the ties up and down against it. Unlike the pre-apocalypse movies, your hands do not magically come undone. In a matter of moments instead, it takes about five minutes, 
and a lot of cursing from accidentally stabbing yourself with the glass to get free. You grab a pistol from the unconscious man's belt and run out of the room. Shouldn't we have also, also, you know, look for something to heal or help us heal? You run down the hallway to the direction that Cortez came from. It appears that you're back in the apartment, bu apartment building, but presumably on one of the higher floors, m moving towards the nearest fire exit, fire escape. You hear a child crying from behind one of the many doors in the hallway. It's hard to pinpoint exactly which door, but you're worried that it's the girl from the courtyard who helped you. Uh, okay, I can't reach into my backpack right now. Uh, let's try room 516. Well, I mean, it'd only be right to try and save the girl. You try the knob, and luckily the door is unlocked. However, nobody is in the room. Are... Are you hearing things? You return to the hallway and, and listen for the screams. Can I save? No, I can't save right now. Alright, let's try 515. Try the knob and luckily the door is unlocked, but there's no one there. Okay, so it's the first one. Confident that this is the right door, you, you try the knob, no luck, it's locked tight. You take a step back and slam your shoulder against the door repeatedly until you hear it cracking from the pressure, a swift kick... In the center causes the door to fly open. A horrible sight lies before you. The girl was here as you recognize the bloody clothes be being torn apart by a group of zombies. Their, their legs appear to be broken, so they crawl uh, amongst the gore, attempting to eat every bit of what remains. So she's dead. Try, trying desperately to, to hold back the vomit entering your throat, you shut the door. Wow. Okay, game. Uh, and they killed an innocent child. That's fucked up. You find a medical kit hanging on the wall next to the fire escape and take it before opening the window and ducking outside. A full moon l lights the fire escape well enough that you have no trouble he heading down it. You're five stories in the air over overlooking the valley where the apartment complex sits. Corralling zombies like a cowboy would would circle his cattle while the passenger in each jeep sprayed the undead with rounds from their assault rifles. The increased activity is worrisome as it appears to be a fight to be a fight the murder jeeps might actually lose. You quicken your pace and eventually reach the bottom of the fire escape. Below you below you still unaware of your presence Cortez and Two bodyguards stand next to a parked Cadillac. Gunshots from a, from a nearby startle the, the three men, and one of the guards flees backwards with a gaping hole in his head. The second guard re returns fire randomly at a nearby tree line, but soon he is felled as well. Cortez cowers behind the Cadillac and uh, appears to be attempting to, to open the trunk. Uh, let's use the med kit. Alright, so that completely heals me. I can't save. Let's confront Cortez. Attack Cortez. You jump down from the fire escape and run and run at Cortez. As you approach, he manages to open the trunk and pull out an assault rifle. He smirks when he notices you preparing to attack him and opens fire. Oh, but I have my fists, though. Uh, yeah, and I got like 16 bullets. Oh, wow, he did a lot of damage. Yeah, I should have uh, equipped my gun first. All right, attack, miss, he misses. Attack, hit him. He misses. Attack, hit him. He hits me. This might kill me. We'll see. Yeah, he's almost dead. And he's dead. Sweet, I won. Cortez lies dead at your feet. You leave his head intact, however, which is the ultimate sign of it of disrespect in the zombie apocalypse. You recognize the four men you saw in the car at the bridge running to you. The four men st stop in front of you, weapons pointed at the ground. They aren't they aren't looking at you, but rather the body of Cortez. One of the four spits on Cortez, then as a single unit, they hurry off away from the apartment complex. You're able to piece together what happened pretty quickly. These men riled up a riled up a large group of zombies and herded them to the apartment complex. The zombies provided a long enough distraction for the four to to take shot at Cortez. To take shots at Cortez. 
Oh boy, had you not been here, maybe their plan wouldn't have worked. Regardless, you know there is one last thing left for you to do. Kill yourself, free the slaves, steal the car. Let's free the slaves. You head back into the apartment building, and nearby, nobody tries to stop you. Apparently, there were many frightened witnesses to what just happened outside. When you approach the slaves, they look at you wide-eyed as you fire Cortez's weapon at the locks to their cages. At first, they assume it's a trick, but eventually they exit the cells. You lead your flock out of Lancaster Market in search of a place where they can start over. You survive for now with a score of 119. Achievement score. No, no melee weapons failed. No guns failed. No killing failed. No trading failed. Kill Snarl and Cortez failed. Radio for help passed. N no healing items failed. All right. Uh, that was the game. Everybody, uh, this is Indie Zombie Let's Play Zombie Adventure. Uh, I got a few mixed feelings about this. I mean, overall, I think it's okay. This is only a buck. Uh, but... Man, this needed a little bit more for this to be a bit more interesting. I mean, I mean, never once really did I ever come across a spot where I was able to get a fresh amount of supplies. I mean, if this game wanted me to trade, I mean, hell, I mean, when I met uh, the sniper at the very beginning of the game who offered me weapons and such, I don't remember ever getting an option to take part of the stash or anything like that so that I could trade or anything like that. And, yeah, and I mean, the game wasn't hard. I mean, I did worry about dying, you know, there for a while, but the game got pretty lenient, you know, there towards the end and finding a gun that was just fully loaded and then finding a med kit just before the last boss fight. Which, even then, the last boss fight really wasn't that hard. I mean, it might have been had I not had the med kit and the gun and just continued to fight with my bare hands. All in all, uh, I gotta give this maybe maybe a 6 or a 5 out of 10. I mean, it's not bad. It's not very good for a Let's Play, though, uh, you know, because it's a text adventure. But I do like the idea of a text adventure RPG survival horror style game. But this needs a little bit more to it for it to be a lot more interesting and certainly for a higher score. So everybody, hope that you've enjoyed. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. And check me out on Twitter at jmrt709. Hope that you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves.